Warning. Elements of real-world religion are used in this podcast to serve the purposes of a work of fiction. They are to drive the drama forward and are not intended to be taken as a statement of opinion by the players. Thank you for listening. But uh, the silhouette approaches your position, and it appears to know you're here as it comes crunching forth uh, over some dry grasses and reeds and things like that, displacing gravel. I'm pointing a shotgun at it. Slowly approach and announce yourself. The uh, the figure comes close enough that the light starts to illuminate facial features and things like that. And what you see is a large, stocky white man wearing tattered gray military pants. Looks like a former Confederate soldier. Mm-hmm. He's bare of chest and uh, appears to have a completely blank look on his face. Just completely gone. And perched on top of him, riding almost piggyback, is a woman who looks like she is completely emaciated. She has her skin clinging tightly to her ribs. Her legs are impossibly thin. She has arms wrapped around this man's neck, and her skin is black as pitch. She looks like she's been cooked by the sun. She's got stringy white hair with patches missing and no teeth. And she's just clinging on to this man's shoulders like a child riding piggyback. And the the running figure is running and you can see she sort of slaps the figure in the face a few times and it stops. And she sort of rears up and looks at each of you. I will, while she's doing that, I will detect fiends and undead and all that shit. And all that jazz. Oh my god. (laughs) (laughs) What exactly do you detect? I detect celestials, fiends, undead, and and fey. And I can determine how powerful they are. You detect the presence of one fey. Alright. And uh, how does your determination of power look? Let me just double check on the fey thing. I'm 90% certain I can do that. Uh, Celestial fiend, or. No, sorry, not fey. It's right. so a celestial you fiend or undead. You don't detect any fey. <laughs> I added that out of my head. Uh, yes, just <laughs> celestial fiend is not dead. Just name, name creature types. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking about protectors. Does it people. do power level out of curiosity? Uh, I can detect... I get a feeling based on how powerful it is. I'm going to rule that you get the feeling anyway. Okay. Uh, it doesn't trigger any of the three things you actually detect. Uh, but what you get is... Uh, and I can detect if an area is desecrated or consecrated as well. The power level far exceeds anything you've detected with your powers, hence. Okay. In the flesh, this is probably the most terrifying thing you've ever detected. All right. Okay. Yeah. Perhaps you should talk to it, and I grant him guidance for if he goes to talk to it. You can also see that as she clings to this shirtless man, she is completely nude. Utterly unclothed. Oh. And she looks like she's well over a hundred years old. Levi approaches it with some deference. With I help put the blow the blow blow dart or work dart away to keep the shield up. You approach this openly? <laughs> yes. Then we welcome the company. What shall we call you, madam? I have many names. Find one that suits you. Mm. To me, I'd say you look like a Christine. <laughs> I was a Christine. Well, perfect. You have experience in being a Christine. But my name is... You may call me Abel Abernathy. This is Joshua Cole. El Kuranz. Of course, Grace. Grace Blackburn. Are these your lands upon which we tread? These lands belong to all. (laughs) Oh, well, wonderful. We are meeting in a common... A common place, a shared environment. Now, 
What has drawn you to us on this day? You're looking to make a deal. We are indeed. You suffered great loss. We have. My companions, well, I have not. My companions have lost oh, no. a boy. You me. have. <laughs> Levi chuckles. Christine, I believe you may be mistaken. These two have lost a boy oh, named Gideon. Gideon. Never mistaken. In any event, they have lost a boy named Gideon. I knew the boy as well. He was a good one. And it'd be lovely to have him back. It's still not a bit prattling. I know what you want. Yes, we, we have... We, we've, we're seeking... I know what you want. Then I will allow you to take it from here, Christine. Please, edify my companions and I on how you might be of service and what we can do for you. I can make a great many deals, Cost you but a memory or a secret. A steep price for some. Is this such a deal you can offer? The power of uh, life returned in exchange for one of these secrets? She looks down at her mount. Do you think that would be fair, dearie? And the, uh, the man who's blank faced. Uh huh. I do like an agreeable sort. He, uh, Levi smiles at the man. He doesn't return your gesture at all. I probably have the sense that I'm in the in the, pre- the presence of a great predator, and I'm looking that way. But Levi's demeanor is indeed very courageous. <clears throat> well, then. how shall we how shall we make this transaction then? In a place of great power. Do you know such a place? Oh, I do, yes. Well, lovely. (laughs) Christine, by your jovial tone, I can tell you are the trustworthy sort. My friends, shall we follow follow Christine? Who chooses the memory? (laughs) The pocketer, of course. I've got a great many I'd get rid of. You'll take the ones I don't want? <laughs> she just laughs at you. What do you do with them? Whatever I wish. <laughs> what is the price for the quality of services rendered? Oh, it's deep indeed. We've got a war off. War off. War off. <laughs> <laughs> If we uh, give you poor memories, if we give you bad memories, things we would like to forget. Oh, I do love dread and regrets. But what is the quality of services rendered? <laughs> if we give you, if you our... If you deal, you'll find out, won't okay. you? I, just, I want to make sure I heard her correctly. Right, she likes memories of fear and dread? Yes. Okay. Um, you're not going to say anything yet. But uh, if you will just... Well, everyone, shall we get going? Moseying, as it were? I want to make sure the boy is right when he comes back. I think that between the, between the four of us, we can offer her something of great quality. Incidentally, uh, Chris, Christine, do you... <laughs> would, do you co- accept a, collect, a collective transaction? I just want to know what our options are. Let us go there first. Certainly. Then we will discuss. All right, and what? And of course, what shall we call your your man here, if he is to be addressed at all? You let address him. Understood. He he says that uh, with a very with an understanding. Like he's but a good lad. And she taps his head, and she leans forward, and she gives him a kiss on the forehead, and he just blank faced. He will. Uh, <clears throat> he will say, "I I too have habil- ha- habilitated." my share of good lads as well. He says with a wink, and projecting some memories of some of his past deeds, which before things changed, he did regret almost every time. She sort of like pushes her hands down on this man's 
neck and shoulders, the collarbone region, sort of pushing her up to change her posture. Looks like her legs probably don't work. They might be seized up in this shape. Mm -hmm. But when she does adjust her body, you can see her legs move, and there's just bruises covering this man's chest, where her ankles and the back of her calves have dug into his skin. Foul creature. This is the creepiest thing I think I've ever heard. This is one of the best one of the best uh, hags I've ever seen. I have a really grotesque image in my head, by the way. Oh yeah. I he'll take a moment if she starts on her way. I'll go by myself if none of you want to part in this. I'm going. I'm not gonna leave you to make this deal by yourself, Mr. Williams. Very charitable of you. Mm, I wouldn't call it that. Don, this is your vision, not mine. Something I would, slot it, no, I, I wouldn't. Okay. I wouldn't go so far as to call her a vision. All right, we follow Christine. All right, Christine leads you. Crispine. Crispine. Oh, oh. oh. She's, she's a little burnt. <laughs> Christine. She rides her mount over a couple different rocky plains. And Structures, and as you get closer and closer to her eventual destination, you see that these rocky areas no longer look like these natural formations where things have been pushed up into these rocky ridges, but instead look almost man made. They actually look tilled. There's been direction taken to make them the way they are. And at some points, you actually start to see things that look like they've propped up bits of like the ground. Just like a like a ridge up like this, with one of these sorts of like sloping on one side and steep on the other, with wooden supports to keep one side up. Hmm. And the wood is aged and yellowed by time, sort of worn away in holes by creatures that have burrowed through it. But it appears to be that somebody's actually taken time to shape the land this way. And as you move along, uh, you do find that. Uh, this individual, this Christine, has apparently settled in a small cottage. It's a log cabin style cottage. Looks like it might have been a woodcutter's cottage at one time. Mm. Has a small chimney. There is a plume of green smoke slowly circling out of the chimney. And as you get nearer, you can constantly feel this pressing cold wind. And you hear whispers behind you, dire warnings and portents. Many of them sound like the voices of children. You've done very well for yourself, Christine. I've collected much. You have indeed. I uh, was just going to take in the sights. Have we reached the, pla- the, pla- the suitable place for this deal? Does this not suit you? Oh, of course it does. Do you not feel at comfort? The voices, the disembodied voices of children are of great comfort to me, I assure you, Christine. Now, you see, he says that you guys recognize it as sarcastic because you've known Levi long enough. Um, He's he's tense. He's just like something's gonna happen any time, and I'm gonna regret all. And this is gonna be terrible. But um, he's the as if he could see it. Like the back, he's gritting his back teeth as he's talking. Like yes, of course. It like with this expression on his face. Like this is like, like I just had to choose to be a good guy the other day. <laughs> <laughs> and this happens. So. <clears throat> Now then, as you can well imagine, my companions have storied pasts, as they intimated to me. But do you require something from each of us, or just one of us? That depends on the bargain. Come in, come in. Of course. Some stew. Stew, that sounds... Can all come in? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know if it was just him. That sounds wonderful. I hope it, now I hope it's not too spicy. She goes over to her uh, bubbling cauldron, and it appears to be the source of this green smoke. It looks like there's some layer of dense fat on the surface that just hasn't been skimmed off, and it's just starting to burn uh-uh. the bubbling fluid underneath. It sounds like that. 
<laughs> I'm hungry already. She dips a big steel ladle into it and pulls out a big glob of some stringy meat. Dumps it into a bowl and she foists one in front of Jedediah. And she starts filling bowls for the rest of you. Uh, Miss Christine, I don't I don't feel real kind. I don't have much of an appetite. Eat. I will not I will not stand to Grace. Maybe just a small bowl. Yeah, I, I would not. to the boy. Boy? I suppose she is old enough to be my mother. I would not like to infringe upon Miss Christine's generous hospitality. I... I, I'm going to, like, turn so my back is to Christine. And I've got the bull in one hand and I'm looking you in the eye. And I'm subtly tapping the butt of my pistol in my cross holster. You need to eat, cousin. Keep up your strength. I take the bowl. She sort of foists it on you. Some of it splashes over the side, gets onto your clothes. Just pop these, God damn it! <laughs> her uh, her slave mount creature uh, is like kneeling down in front of the cauldron as she does this. Well. I am famished. And do I have, do I have a bowl in front of me? She gives you a bowl. Perhaps we should check. For perhaps we should perhaps have a blessing before we before we eat. Is that is that custom for you, Christine? I, I mean, I could I could devour this entire bowl right here and now. It is custom for me, and I do purify food and drink. I I don't I I, can, I kind of move, move move it aside from this thing. Like, All right, you do your thing. <laughs> I will, uh, I'll just start, I'll just, does she give us utensils, or is it just like a drink kind of thing? It's like drinking it. Okay, yep, I immediately go into it. And you're specifically avoiding his purifying? Yes. Because I don't, because, Levi does give you a look, look like, (laughs) he's giving it to all of you, like, are you people serious? (laughs) Oh, um, hold on, can I, I'll make a, what would be a good role to convey an expression to you guys without words? Insight. Yes. Insight? Damn it. Okay, 12. Uh, do you think I can get a, a simple message across with that? Very simple. Okay, like, uh, he gives you guys a look like, like, watch yourselves. Or, or maybe even, like, follow my lead. Almost got kind of a warning in yeah. the eyes. Be uh, cool, yeah. baby. Yeah, pretty much. Maintain. All right. uh, yeah, that's a simple phrase. Maintain, bro. Yeah. Each of you needs a little note space on your sheets. Okay. Uh, one tally mark for you. One tally mark for you. Elka runs two tally marks for you. Oof. That was just different from the tally mark I already accumulated Dude. from failing the skill challenge. Yes. Do I get something? No. Cool. Hey, yeah, you get a bolus too. Yeah. Great How knowledge. is it, by the way? Horrible. Tastes like children. Awesome. It tastes very bad. Like she's been cooking with sand and rotten vegetables. Mm. And cauliflower. Mm. Quite a rustic flavor. Exotic. Unlike anything I've had before. Well done, Christine. I need to let it ferment first. You have made an impression. Oh, I'm sure I have. You're a charmer. Oh, it is a blessing and a curse, I assure you. What would it take to acquire your tongue? <laughs> I'd imagine you'd have to do some do some careful cutting. She looks towards her knife block. Maybe keep it in a jar, in a pickle jar with the brine. She looks over at her arrangement of pickle yeah. jars. <laughs> He's saying this with a smile, with the intention with the intent to keep charming her. He's, he kind of has a sense of how to conduct himself in this situation. So you're looking around through the inside of her cottage, you can see that most of what's in here is covered in a dense layer of dust that has not been disturbed in some time. <clears throat> she has shelf upon shelf upon shelf of bizarre and obscure knickknacks. All sorts of clippings of people's hair and toenails. Jars that look like fetuses. She has what looks like a boar that has been skinned and turned inside out and then preserved above her mantelpiece. 
oh. dealing secrets, yes. Certainly you're all seeking some knowledge. Some mm. closure. We are seeking a miracle. Oh, the cast is steep indeed. Well, by, by, your, by the way you've been treating us, I'm beginning to think you might be a saint, my lady. Uh, and, give me a persuasion check. And, uh... Well, hold on. I'm going to add something to it that may give me advantage. Okay. So, so uh... And, you know, I... It seems so lonely out here. I was wondering if perhaps... And I'll shake the, the egg. If you might be interested in a pet as well to sweeten our little deal. Like, ima- imagine what... Imagine what great company this little terror could keep with you. Right, give me the advantage. <laughs> Oh my god! Your vintage uh, sucks! Yeah, it really does. Uh, well, I'm. Anybody have inspiration on? I'm, I'm, I'm oh, you gave, me, you gave me guidance. Yeah, I gave you guidance. Yeah, I'll know. Alright, well, so that's a total of 13 then. Uh, it looks like Kaylee is offering you her inspiration. Oh man! Don't waste it. Don't fuck it up! Like wow. that! Wow, man! Playing sauce. <laughs> Well, is worth garbo in this. <laughs> well, now it's just an 11. Pass me a badge? Or rather, a 12. I see you're no stranger to bargaining. Well, that is what we came out here for. Can't get the, we can't get the worthwhile goods and services in the regular towns. Well, you have to, you have to go out of your way to get the good deals. And what seek you? Well, as we said before, I'm, I owe, owe a little favor to these two here, as they've lost a boy named Gideon. What seek you? I seek Gideon's return on their behalf. You hear her voice telepathically. And what seek you? And it sounds much more malicious. Yeah, I bet it does. There's an overtone of it. Fuck. <laughs> Can I respond telepathically? You feel like you could. <clears throat> Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll test her reaction right quick. I, you, you want to, you, well, you want to know my desires? She nods. <clears throat> to nothing in particular. Uh, Levi, I'll say that, uh, the sudden... I guess mental assault of her presence in his mind, and the sheer malice of it, I suppose, it kind of stirs some part of him that's still there, despite everything. Uh, and almost just as a reflex, um, there's a voice that Levi recognizes as his own, and probably, he's being, again, he's not used to talking telepathically. So this voice of Levi's, which are his desires, which he's try- been trying to put aside up till now, uh, is something like, I want to be changed. I want to be of the higher rank, the next caste level, and I want to see those I desire to become like me. I want to see temperance changed. She leans back. She grasps a pipe from over the mantelpiece. And and uh, and, and you, got, you guys, again, you don't hear this, but... but Levi, it, he looks like the wind got knocked over. <laughs> Excuse me. Must be the must be the stew. She grabs the pipe, <laughs> puts the pipe in her mouth, and puffs. And she just looks at you. This sort of smug look on her face. Levi maintains the his his ever so charming expression. Her, uh, her mount descends to his knees, and her crippled legs slowly bend outwards as she steps onto the ground of her cottage. Her legs are most of her body. Her pelvis is about here, proportionally, and they are impossibly thin. Skin and bones doesn't cover it. This is thinner than that. <coughs> the impossible girl. Yep. And when she strides towards you, her steps are enormous. She's upon you in an instant. 
and she places one withered hand on your face. Oh, well, she, she did get me dinner. And tell me what do you wish to bargain with? She says that out loud in the group. Mm. Well, uh, so they, so my companions do not have to give any, give up anything of themselves. You may take, he hesitates, you may take the memory of my family, my friends, my neighbors. You may take all the traces of the life I had before being anointed. They are nothing. All... They are nobody. You know what I want. You have seen the grace of it. It has touched you. I want it. And this will bring the boy back to life? No. This will bring your wishes to fruition. No. Oh. She's speaking out loud at this point. Yep. This. She. Can I? Can I blurt out something? Blurt away. Yes. That's what blurt is all about. <laughs> at this point, Levi is just—he's kind of sw- he's sweating a little bit. Like uh, uh, for the first time, you actually see him stammer a little bit. He some he does he is hesitant as to what to say. And you guys are like, oh, this is bad. Levi doesn't have words. <laughs> He's not talking. He's really broken. <laughs> <laughs> she wants what... She wants what makes you you. If you give it up, you will be nobody. Stay strong. This is not who you think it is. All right, you have changed the result of my role. Can I guidance you at this point? No, no I got it. Okay. I got it. I had to determine... Oh, that was, that was... Okay, no I, If I rolled a f- five to six, it would be yes. Anything else, I'd be... Levi would restrain himself. I may take you up on this on a later date, but for now, I want to focus on the de- on the deal that we came for. She looks like completely disinterested in you at this point, and turns to Jedi. <laughs> oh, I thought she was going to nuke me. And wow! Levi, and and then Levi slump. At least she's ignoring you. He's like, he's like, he's wow. slump. We're on chairs, right? Yeah. He's slump in his chair, like. <sighs> she walks to you with frightening haste. She is in front of you, inches from your face in a second. Jed's like, he's for, like trying to to square up to her, but like you can tell by his ragged breathing that he's terrified. He's breathing like hard through his nose. Like She's up in front of you in a moment. And you can feel her hand on yours by the butt of your gun. Mm-hmm. I've seen him in this way before. I seek it not. And she draws the gun from your belt. She tosses it across the floor. You got punt. What is it you seek? Perhaps you are more befitting of making a deal. Perhaps you would not be invited into an old woman's home only to spit in her face. see her smile, and the corners of her mouth go to here, and to here, and all the way up to here. And she looks cartoonish with her smile. Her mouth encapsulates half of her face, all the way to the base of her ears. This rictus, this impossible mouth full of teeth, all the way up. with you. You're my compass. She I want the boy back. 
give you I'll give you the last memory of my mother. She leans in close to you and the smile doesn't fade, but it shrinks slightly, her nostrils expand and dilate. The, the boy for your mother. I want more. What would you have? What have you got? And she puts her hands on your head. Wisdom saving throw, please. Oh, shit. I was gonna get resistance, but it's probably gonna be resistance. You were forgetting something. Oh. Um, you have a certain condition. Oh. Son, you've got a condition. <laughs> Disadvantage, I believe. Woo! Oh. Get your whole face wrecked. Uh, that is a. It's not terrible, it's an 11. She places her hands on your head, and the smile widens. And widens. The oh. deal of three. It's always threes. Three men. Oh, this is too much like a fairy tale. What sought you out in those deserts? What secrets lie years from now? What would they say if you had no knowledge of such a you threw it all away for nothing. <laughs> I wish that and your mother. Just to be clear, what exactly is she asking? For all of your memories in regards to the deal you made, and you're still out there. Mm, okay. So I'd have no knowledge of the deal I made. Nope. Do I have any um, ability to resist this? Uh, you have an ability to make a counteroffer. She's trying to make a deal. Mm. Deal or no deal? Make great deals. I'll give you my mother. Best hags. Best taxi. And I'll give you Bowie Notch. The rest of it remains mine. She strokes her chin. She's got a couple of those like old person white hairs coming out of her chin. Ugh. She rubs it out. Compelling. And rich. But I believe there's more to be dealt. Keep I that thought close to your heart. I get those two things, or I'll bury myself next to that treasure. And you know I'll do it. Afraid of death is not your way. Afraid of life like a coward. He turns his head away from her. <laughs> and what of you, Missy? <laughs> and Temperance looks at her dead on. No change in facial expression. Hands in her lap. She goes, I want the boy. I want the boy. Hold and sane just as he was before he fell. She looks at you, and she looks almost like there's consternation in her face. Your memories are none that I want. Wasn't that a shame? I came here to make a deal, and you're gonna make me a deal. There's a fire in this one. <laughs> Do you envy my slave? No. I don't envy anyone held in captivity. 
man or woman, black or white, rich or poor. But yet you would do anything for this child. I want my boy back. Which means I want the ability to see him and hold him and care for him as I once did. She leans up close to your face, she says, I could cut your throat and you would. Think more clearly on this deal. Levi looks like he has an idea, but he is too polite to interrupt. Can I do anything? Can I insight, yes. any, can I insight <laughs> any of this shit? <laughs> can I just Absolutely. Fuck is going Absolutely. On? I'm just gonna fucking roll insight. I, I mean, there's so much shit I want to do, but spoiler <laughs> alert: she's a scumbag. So I rolled a twenty-four on oh, insight. Damn. What is it you're trying to determine? <laughs> can she fulfill any promise, or is she full of shit? She is uh, an overwhelmingly powerful creature. Can she bring the dead back to life? You're unsure. But the fact that it's not out of the question is terrifying. You cannot help these people. You are a lie of lies. You are, you are trying to take advantage of them. You cannot bring anyone. You cannot help anyone. What, what a great imagination on this old fellow. Now, Christine, I think I may have an idea that would help, particularly to give you something that she, to, to offer a deal regarding her, to, to sweeten this for you. Might we have a private conversation? She glares at you. As we had before. Something you may not have thought of. Maybe something you don't know yet. She glares, but she doesn't approach you. Okay. Um, I, try, I, cry, I try thinking at her. Trying again, testing in my head. You don't receive a response. Is this thing on? <laughs> Is there any Alright then, may I approach and whisper in your ear? Come along then, boy. Get up. So Levi will whisper, whisper to her as much out of earshot of her as possible. Gideon is not her actual biological son. It is simply something she is experiencing, a madness. You might exploit that to make it come true. Imagine the situations you can create knowing that she is willingly living a lie to bring this boy back, to have this one thing. Imagine the terror you can inflict. Once this deal is done, she gets what she wants. Are you fit to offer this? Oh, it is but a suggestion. You are mar- you are far more experienced in these in these bargains than I am. I have more of an idea, man. I would offer a compromise. What's your compromise? You will serve me. How? You will do as I will. You will see as I see. When you walk this land. You walk it on my behalf. I will see what you see. I will smell what you smell. I will taste what you taste, and I will fuck what you fuck. Ha <laughs> ha! Mm. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, not chunks. I want nothing more repulsive than me. <laughs> Is that really all you want? But it's something you have to offer. And this one thinks his memories have so little value. <laughs> Grace, Joshua, if this deal means so much. Drop to the you. charade! My name. No. Listen. I will give you my name. No, I will take on all of this, and I will cor- I will debase and corrupt myself, and abandon everything that means that much to you to bring him back. This creature cannot help you. You are all fools. I think she is true to her word, sir. On what basis? You just came along into our party, and you are not much older than she is. How can we trust your word? 
I'm not the one trying to steal your memories and make you serve me. Well, this this creature wants to take advantage of you. What you think she's going to bring your your precious Gideon back? She has no interest in. She only has Gideon interest is, in herself. Gideon is not precious to me. What is precious to me is doing good, and I want to do what is good for you You're too. Dealing with demons, and you wish to do good. The she's not a she's not a demon. I already checked. She went the way. I'm unsure of that part. <laughs> she's simply a power. She there are many powers, you. and not all powers can bring life to the death. A name. And a memory. I suspect you just argued while this is still happening. And Probably, his yeah. memories. <laughs> she seems like the type that would ignore you right. altogether. Oh. I imagine Levi's racism comes out a little bit with you, too. Yes, I'm used to that. Yeah. I'll throw up. Which chief in Washington make promises to us and doesn't do anything. Which memory? Whatever I want. Which memory? I'm a businesswoman too, Miss Christine. And I know the first rule of business is always get paid up front. So I want to know what services I am being paid for and what the cost is. This Christine has more knowledge than I do as a DM. What would you consider the most prized memory that you have as Temperance Allendale? Leaving home. When you were young and so full of hope, when you thought things would be so much greater. Everything except... Augustus Brown, you may keep him. Keep him locked away and dead inside. Take it. No second thoughts, I trust. What are we getting paid for? What are you getting paid for? He will live and breathe again. As he was before? Yes. And you may find the tool you seek. I have a condition. So do I. I hold on to that memory until the deed is done. Otherwise the deed won't get done. I need that hate a moment longer. And you may have it. Very well, but if you die, I will take your soul instead. Have it. Tattered old ugly thing ain't worth a damn to me anyway. God. Well, are we also. Is there anything else. Anything further, Christine? Well, I think we should. Probably be hitting the old dusty trail. <laughs> we thank you for your hospitality. This, this is no house of God. Get out of my home. In this lively discussion. Get out! It'll just kind of take his time. Of course. Ugh. And you out! You sure this is what you want, the two of you? I want my boy back. You heard the woman, let's get going. But at what cost? And I'm, I'm, I'm reholstering my sidearm at this point, just short, sort of brushing, but it was the only cost. You stay another second, it's at your own peril, let's get going. Levi says... Just before I leave, I say... You have not received any guarantees. But this is all on you. You! And then I turn and leave. And she's, yeah, yes, yes, my fair lady. A clawed finger. Come back. I'm being re-invited. Foolish. What may Foolish what individuals. what may this brave knight do for you, Christine? That egg. <laughs> I want it. In exchange for, she gestures to a wall of knickknacks and magical finalia. You did so blithe. You did so blithely refuse it before. Perhaps. Uh, hmm. 
I'll take a look at them. Does anything catch my eye? Uh, give me an arcana check. Nineteen. Literally everything in here is magical. Neat. Any uh, armament or like arms or armor? That... Probably not. I know it's a that kind of thing. She but... uh, she places her hand on your shoulder mm-hmm. as you look around at what she has. She says, "Oh, do you have it with you?" Referring to what? For, for just for Josh's edification, you get this flashback of a memory of Gideon being devoured by Onkeds. Oh, the trophy! Pull one of my nets. I do indeed. Impress the townsfolk very well. For the magic to work, it needs a piece of you. You surrender it fully. For the magic to work. And she holds the head up, and she looks like she's like rail thin, but she holds this goddamn thing up, and it's yeah. like close to 100 pounds. Yeah. Mm. I see you've been working out, Christine. <laughs> <laughs> That's been for the magic of the head to work. That both Levi and Joshua are having trouble understanding. You get the image of yourself much like this creature was out in the desert, impervious to harm from the back. Mm. Wearing a shining suit of plate mail. Mm. That's something. Made of the hide of a dangerous wilderness creature. Mm. <clears throat> what, about a sh- what about a shield, Christine? Something a bit more portable. My body has been sculpted in such a way that I don't think plate may would be quite, well, light enough for me. Mm, yes, you I do have a. Th- you want to show off my your delicate figure, physique? Yes. If uh, the, I mean, she's the only one who's seen Levi somewhat naked. <laughs> Not all of him, but you would have known, like his body is. It was deliberately he worked out in a way to look a certain way. His strength is that of appearance, not so much fighting strength. Perhaps something more free. No, no shield, nothing so barbaric. I'll tell you what. Why don't I why don't I leave this little critter here, and I can cash this favor in another time. She is very disappointed. I won't forget you, Christine. I'm very disappointed. I want to see your loot. Um, I mean if she can do a, a light a lightweight armor like a mithril kind of thing. Where it's, it doesn't have the strength requirement. Oh, she can. That'd be, I mean, that'd be cool. Oh, she can. All right. And you're willing to sacrifice a piece of yourself. You can take those elements of my past before, uh, before the anointing. A piece of your physicality, your form, your shape, your health. No. Oh. <laughs> Just the what about just for the egg, Christine? Yeah. <laughs> it has to come with something else, not just the egg. The magic won't work without a piece of you. Oh, for heaven's sake. Christine, I do have a job to do, but it's been a pleasure. And thank you for being so flexible in your plans. What she's offering you is no strength requirement. I believe it's half plate you were after. Mm-hmm. Half plate mail. Or, well, uh, whatever the, the best plate I could get without the strength requirement would be great, but a breastplate would also be cool. Breastplate but, I can, or, but I can wear that anyway with. Breastplate or half plate, no strength requirement, magical, plus one. <gasps> However, permanently minus one hit die. Minus one hit die. Yeah. Okay, that's not too terrible actually. Mm. Can I trade you the egg for simple knowledge? She spits into the cauldron. 
Sizzles. He does sizzle. Well? No. Unfortunate. There's forms beyond the physical, beyond just fancy clothing that I seek. And you, you already know that, don't you? You've already seen what I want, and as well. I want it, but on my own terms. So I will seek it out. Christine, it's been a pleasure. Perhaps we may... Get out! Again sometime. I might have more eggs for you, all right? Then. 